All right, guys, the Buffalo Bills win 24-22. I'm not going to sugarcoat it, guys. This team looked absolutely pathetic. Um, we almost simply lost one of the worst teams in the National Football League. We almost lost to a third, to a, to a, to a, to a once again. A, we, 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 we some, for some reason, we tend to struggle with backup quarterbacks. Um, but we literally almost gave this game away. Uh, three turnovers, all resulting in points, 13 points that we that we simply gave away. Uh, Josh Allen, once again, won me $300 because he threw, a, he threw an interception. Guys, if you want to get easy money, if you simply want to, if you want to make the easiest bread of your life, just bet that Josh Allen's going to throw a pick, guys. Josh Allen has won. Just, just bet. Josh Allen has has almost he's almost won me a thousand dollars. He's almost won me a thousand dollars because of the picks that he's throwing, guys. So as soon as as soon as as soon as I saw him looking in the opposite direction, I knew that he was going to throw across his body. I knew that he wasn't going to plant his foot because because again he relies too much on his arm instead of just focusing on the fundamentals. I knew that he wasn't going to plant because if he simply would have just plant, stepped up into the throw, he's launching that bitch, and that's either going to be an overthrow pass or that's going to be a touchdown or a big or a big chunk gain to Stephon Diggs. But instead, he tries to throw it across his body without even uh, setting up the fundamentals, and he ends up th- and he ends underthrowing it and throwing an interception. I knew he was going to do it. That's typical Josh Allen type of type of behavior. Whenever he's going to try to throw that bitch down the field, I knew it. So uh, Josh Allen now has 15 interceptions. Uh, it is what it is. He's a turn. I mean, he's a turnover machine. You know, he's, he's a gunslinger. He's Brett Favre, right? He's, you know, just, just like how Brett Favre literally used to stare down defenders and still throw it. That's how Josh Allen is, right? Josh Allen just can't help himself, but you know, who knows? Brett Favre won three MVPs. Brett Favre won a Super Bowl. It's just, these are the, the, I mean, it's just who it is, right? Andrew Luck, same, Andrew Luck, same thing, right? Gunslinger. This is just who Josh Allen is. And, uh, you know, I've, I've kind of accepted it. But besides that, I thought he had a pretty decent outing. Um, our receivers, Gabe Davis, stepped up today. I'm not expecting Gabe Davis to replicate what he did against New England, uh, like he did in this game against New England. I'm not expecting it at all. I'm expecting Gabe Davis to go right back into his old form. Because this is, a, this is who Gabe Davis is this year, right? Gabe Davis will have 100 yards. He'll have 200 yards one game. And then, he'll have, then, then the next game, he'll have zero catches. Then, then, then three games later, he'll have a hundred. He'll have like a, a huge game, 120, 30 yards. The next game, he'll have like 15, 20 yards. Th- this is just who Gabe Davis is. Um, but these receivers, guys, just struggle with separation. Um, the last, really, the last, pretty much all year round, these receivers have really, sep- uh, have really struggled when it comes to getting separation. Um, I have no idea what the issue is. I think Stephon Diggs. You know, we're trying to get him involved. We're trying to, for- I mean, even in the first, like the first couple of drives, we tried to force things into Stephon Diggs and it's just not working, right? The targets, I mean, when you look at the targets, Stephon Diggs is getting targets, right? He is always going to be the lead receiver. That's going to get the most targets. But at some point, guys, we got to stop forcing these these throws to Stephon Diggs. I understand you want to try to get your number one receiver involved, but uh, I feel like for the most part, we went away, we went, a li- we went away a little bit from the run game. We went away from what worked last week to try to force a little bit more into a balanced look. And listen, Josh Allen's not going to throw for less than 100 yards every game. We understand that. And matter of fact, you know, you look at this game. I mean, Josh Allen, I think he had less than 200 yards passing in this game as well. I mean, Josh Allen didn't really have a, a, a great game. I didn't think he had a bad game, but he also didn't have a great game. Um, but these receivers, man, I mean, it, it almost felt like karma, to be honest with you, because we should have been getting, we should have been drafting receivers. We should have been, uh, getting more uh, uh, free agency as far as as far as as far as signing to uh, more receivers until not big time contracts, but you know thirty forty million dollar type deals. And instead, we've just been ignoring it, right? We've been simply getting small rotational type receivers. We've simply been getting receivers in like the fourth, like in day three of the draft. And it, and it seems like karma is like now biting this team in the ass um, because now I mean because I mean we we do have a receiving problem. We do. And listen, I like Khalil Shakir. Um, Gabe Davis, you know, he's, I don't know what I'm going to give for Gabe Davis. I mean, he had a great game today, but what's he going to look like for the next two weeks? I don't know what I'm going to give for Gabe Davis in, uh, in, uh, uh, in a weekly basis. Stephon Diggs is struggling. Guys, he hasn't had a 100 yard game since October, early October. Like he is struggling and I don't know what the issue is. You can tell, I mean, Joe Brady really tried to call some, and again, this wasn't, this was, this was a lot of people are going to praise Joe Brady today. This wasn't a great. Ge- this was not a good game uh, game plan at all by Joe Brady. This was not a good. This was not a good game plan from a schematic standpoint and from a play design standpoint. This was not a good game for Joe for Joe Brady. This 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 game looked Ken Dorsey ish. It looked Ken Dorsey ish. 
Um, and listen, I'm not going to bring Joe Brady down and say that he's a terrible offensive coordinator, but out of all the games that I thought that he coached today, I thought this was by far his worst game. This was by far his worst coach game. This was even worse. This was by, by far his worst coach game because against you had superior talent. Kansas City, that was against the top 10 defense. And you got to give Steve Spagnola a great job because he made awesome adjustments in the second half, right? It's it's hard to oh, oh, to simply game plan and out coach Steve Spagnola for four quarters, right? He's one of the best defensive coordinators in the game. This, but against the Chargers team, though, that didn't have Coach Staley as their defensive coordinator, a defense that's been struggling pretty much all year round, and you couldn't take advantage. No, no, this this was by this was just not a good game plan at all by Joe Brady, in my personal opinion. And listen, it's not going to be able to, it's not all on Joe Brady, because at the end of the day, three turnovers gave them 13 points, right? Three turnovers gave them 13 points. Uh, James Cook fumbling. Ball, again, James Cook has a 1,000 yards rushing. Matter of fact, I, James Cook is the second leading rusher in the National Football League. But the, but the one thing that's been plaguing James Cook, and we've actually benched him for this crap, is ball security. Simple ball security. Why do we continuously go in these power packages and we bring in bigger guys like Latavius Murray and, and uh, 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 Leonard Fournette in short yardage situations? Why do people keep questioning that? Well, simple, because James Cook has struggled with ball security. And he struggled with it again. I think he actually, had, like, what? This is his fifth fumble of the season? As far as, uh, he struggles with ball security. That's the one big issue with James Cook I've had all year with him. And guess what? A fumble led up to three points. After when our defense pretty much prevented, nope. I think our our, you know, our, our defense got on the field again. Our defense really only let one touchdown happen. And that was because of a fucking turnover. Three turnovers resulted in three, resulted all all scoring drives. Josh Allen throwing it across his body. Dante Hart Hardy, and oh my goodness gracious, why in the absolute fuck are we not firing our, our special teams coordinator? See, we want to make Ken Dorsey out to be the bad guy and the big scapegoat, but the one dude who cost you a game that, that was responsible for 12 men on the field still has a job. Why? Why does he still have a job after, after this dude is solely responsible for 12 men on the field? But uh, our, our our kicking our, our kicking coverage unit, our punting our punting. Sam Sam Martin had a great game today, but Sam Martin statistically has been the worst part of the National Football League. Kicking has been a fucking disaster. We have been terrible on all facets of our special teams unit, and this guy still is employed. But yet we're so quick to pull the trigger on Ken Dorsey, and rightfully so. But why isn't he fired? Why isn't he out of a job? Dante Hardy has been terrible all year round as our punt returner. And yes, he wasn't he wasn't returning punts all year all year. But when he's been there, when he's been the guy to punt, he is clearly not a good returner. He had so much room and so much cushion, at least 7 yards of cushion every time he would return a punt, and he could he couldn't do anything with it. He is clear and obvious obviously not the guy to return punts. You you could have put Leonard Fournette as your punt return. He's had experience punt return. You could have put him as your punt return if you want if you wanted to. He would have been a better option than Dante Hardy. What about Khalil Shakir? He's had experience returning punts. You there's you you have options. You have plenty of options of guys that can return punts. And yet for some reason we think that Dante Hardy's our best option. I don't know. I don't know, man. Um. But no, guys, this team played like absolute garbage. I'm not. I know people are gonna sit up here and say, "Well, this team, this oh, the Bills look like a playoff team. Oh, they fought through adversity, nine and six. We're in the playoff spot, guys. We almost lost to a Chargers team that's been one of the worst teams in the national. The, the Raiders put up sixty three points on this team. Now, listen, I knew we were, we're we were not gonna put up sixty three points, but I thought we were gonna win this game at least by two scores. And instead, it was literally a tooth and nail fight. With one of the worst teams in the National Football League, because not because the Chargers played their best game of the season, no, it was because we literally almost gave them the the game away. Three turnovers that resulted in touchdown, that resulted in uh, that resulted in points, thirteen points. We almost gave the game away by our own discretion. For some reason, we are the opposite of the Miami Dolphins. The Miami Dolphins can't beat good teams, and we can't beat bad, and we can barely beat bad teams. I don't know, man. We'll see what happens against the Patriots. Another bad team, but for some reason, we made Easton look like freaking Peyton Manning out there today. I could imagine. It, I, I could imagine, man. What would happen, man? Oh God, playing against their backup quarterback or Mac Jones, whoever the hell is going to be starting. 
We'll see. But a win is a win, I guess. Nine and six. We'll see what they can do against uh, the Patriots next week.